morning, everyone. Welcome to 511 Morning Show. Um, guys, it's, it's hard for me not to start my show this morning with a heavy heart. I'm both angry and sad because we're seeing the devastation. We started the show with an overview of some of the devastation. Our hearts are heavy, and we're, prayers are going out to all of the hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions of people that have been affected by the hurricane. And the government, FEMA, is not just failing to respond appropriately. They're stopping others from helping. The money that is supposed to go to the victims, what else can you call them but victims of this hurricane, this natural disaster, we knew it was coming. And it's interesting because I've watched content talking about, I don't know, this is clearly a conspiracy theory, but how many of our conspiracy theories have been proven true over time as well. There was some content I had watched talking about steering hurricanes. I know it sounds crazy, right? But there was some content I had watched about steering hurricanes using weather manipulation to intentionally cause it to go through a certain path. And there are reasons for that related to lithium mining and other things. I'm not saying it's true. This is all alleged. It's conspiracy theory. Who knows? If you're out there watching and, and you think, yeah, you know what? There's, there's something to that, Mike. Drop a comment. Let me know. Let me know what you guys think. Regardless, FEMA is failing, failing to respond appropriately because we've sent money to illegals, housing, food, everything else. We've sent millions, billions I don't know what the exact number is, but it's somewhere probably around $8 billion to Ukraine to protect their country, to protect their borders. We're not protecting our borders. We're failing at every level. And now, when our people need it the most, here's a $750 check. We're going to play some clips of all this here in just a few minutes talking about what's going on and the failure to react and the failure to allow others to react. We're rallying. People of America are rallying. People across this country are coming together to help each other because that's what we do. That's what we in America do. And our corrupt institutions our lying, manipulative media is lying to us, is stealing from us, is not helping us, and is stopping us from helping each other. We have to demand better. We can't continue to allow this to go on. And isn't it interesting, the timing of all this? We're seeing grocery stores across the country Full, about to be emptied, very likely. Y'all remember what happened in 2020. The ports are shut down. The ports on, on the East Coast are shut down. Now, there's lots of reasons for this. The, the dock workers, the um, uh, longshoremen, are striking. There's reasons why they're striking. But... It is already causing a supply shortage, a food shortage, and many other things. Because people are in panic mode. And of course they're in panic mode. What else do we expect? And I'm not here today to, to talk about the elections, though it matters. As a man, supposedly, we don't know what his, what his pronouns are, but as a man that I will not name, stated, elections have consequences, and they do. So remember that in November. Remember what's going on right now? 
when when you go to cast your cast your ballot to cast your vote because it does matter and what's at stake right now is literally people's lives literally our livelihoods we're going to watch today i got a bunch of video for you guys talking about what's going on in the hurricane what's going on in the aftermath people trying to help people being stopped from helping what resources are being applied, what resources aren't being applied. But also, I want to share with you, because we do have the American spirit, and we do care about each other. Every time we see something like this happen, we see people come out of the woodwork to rally, to care about their brothers and sisters, their fellow countrymen, their fellow citizens. So we're going to have some, some good in here as well, because there's a lot of people that want to help, are trying to help, and are helping. And I'm going to share with all of you guys, regardless of where you're at, whether you're in California or you're in North Carolina, I'm going to share with you how you can help. We have some friends of ours that are, that are pulling something together. And I know there's many others who are doing it across the country. So, guys, I'm, again, I'm angry and I'm saddened. But I'm also encouraged to see what's going on. So we're going to talk about all this today. Before we do, we've got to pay some bills. So I want to first start out by mentioning one of our great sponsors, Freedom 2.0. Freedom 2.0 is a proud sponsor of 5.11 Media Group, the 5.11 Morning Show. They have a great product. We use their product every day. At the, I'm at the point now where I'm using their product to make my coffee, to make my pre-workout drink, to hi stay hydrated throughout the day. They don't just have water, though they do. That's where they started. They have hydration packs and, and um, energy packs and, and other things. But you can, you can go check them out at freedom20.com. Use code 511 for 15% off. And to promote what they're doing. We've had them on our show, by the way, many times, and we will continue to do so because these are patriots. Cyrus, Elizabeth, Gage, the whole team over there at Freedom 2.0. They're pushing back against the woke corporations that are trying to silence us, that are trying to censor us that are trying to take away our God-given, inalienable, says so in the Constitution, says so in the Bible, they're trying to take away our rights. We have to support and stand behind the companies that are doing the work to support the values that we believe in, that are doing the work to defend our rights and defend our freedoms. Darius, can we roll that video? So, guys, go check them out, freedom20.com. Use code 511 for 15% off. And we actually have a brand new sponsor. They're not brand new to us, but they're brand new to you guys. Stand Up Now Apparel. Use code 511 for 10% off with Stand Up Now Apparel. Gerard, good friend of mine, been on this show again many times. We don't just bring sponsors to you guys to promote products to make a quick buck, or any of those things. We bring products to you guys from people we believe in. We vet every single one of them. We know where they stand and what they stand for. Stand Up Now Apparel stands for biblical values first, just like we do here at 511, and freedom and pro-America values second. Guys, again, we got to support the companies that are supporting us. We got to support the companies that are supporting our freedoms. So go check them out, Stand Up Now Apparel, use code 511 for 15% off. And finally, we have Covenant Coffee. Covenant Coffee has been a longtime sponsor of 511. They're 
one of the first for 511, by the way. One of my favorites. They're doing great work in Baker. So they have great coffee as well. K-cups, beans, bags, the whole bit. They also have stores local in Bakersfield, California. As I was saying, guys, we got to support the companies that are doing the work behind our values. Covenant Coffee is one of those that is standing up for the voiceless, taking a stand for the foster youth, providing jobs, mentorship, housing, making a difference in the communities that so often become a statistic. Guys, go support them, covenantcoffee.org, or if you're in Bakersfield, across the street from us at Mohawk in California or on North Chester. And I know you guys, I'm pointing. You guys have no, no earthly idea what, where I'm sitting in the studio here. So my pointing means nothing to you guys. Either way, go check them out. Wanted to also mention a few resources we put together for you guys. So number one is the election strategy playbook that we've created for you guys to expose the lies of the liberal media, expose the lies of the left, all the things that they don't want you to know, and show you how to make a difference in this upcoming election and beyond. Because once November hits, it doesn't stop there. You're like, well, what are you, you going to do after? We have to continue because you think that the other side's going to stop? You think that the evil's going to stop? It ain't gonna, it ain't gonna happen, guys. So we have to continue as well. But you can get this resource from us completely free. All you gotta do is enter your email at 511media.co. Election strategy playbook. We line out what you can do to make a difference in your community, for God, for our country, for our future, for our children. Go check it out right now. Also. We got two events coming up that I want to let you know about. The first first one is in December, December 19th through the 22nd in Phoenix, Arizona. And we, if we got that video, let's roll it. What you represent, your presence here, that the largest multi-day event in conservative grassroots history. is a message that will be heard by these people. Phoenix, Arizona, people from all over it's the country. It's quite remarkable because it brings everybody together. One of together. my favorite of the year. The energy, let us want you to see it. The stakes are high. We have only begun to fight. So guys, go register for, for the event. Amfest.com, America Fest. We're going to be there. We're going to have a booth. We're going to be live streaming. We're going to be doing interviews. We're going to have merch. We're going to be able to connect with all of you guys. We want to see you there in December, December 19th through the 22nd in Phoenix, Arizona. It's going to be a fantastic time. And after last night's debate, there's not a single doubt in my mind which direction this election's heading. But we want to see you there to celebrate victory with us because we all believe in America. We all believe in God. And we want to promote and celebrate those values and those victories in Jesus' name. Second event, a little bit sooner than that one, coming up in just a few weeks, just, just under a month, November 2nd in Tampa, Florida, is Blexit Night of Faith. The Blexit Night of Faith, we're going to have some amazing worship, some awesome speakers. 511 is going to be there. We're going to be covering the event. We're going to be talking to all of you guys. We're going to, again, we're going to have our merch there. We're going to have uh, resources. We'll have a copy of the election strategy playbook so you can take it and use it right before election day. And uh, guys, we need you. We need to see you there. Uh, we need to support organizations just like this one, just like the organizations we highlight here at this show every single day. We want to see you there in Tampa, Florida. It's going to be a good time, guys. So as I was saying, we want to talk about what's going on over in the East Coast. I'm blessed. I wake up blessed every day for many reasons. 
But today I say I'm blessed because even though there's a lot of reasons to not be in California, today I'm blessed to be in California because one of the great things about our state here is we don't get these crazy weather events. Sure, we get earthquakes. But I know many of you guys are afraid of those as well. The times when there's actually catastrophic disasters from earthquakes is like once in a lifetime. But on the East Coast, they deal with this stuff nearly every year, at least every few years at, at most. And this is one of the worst in recorded history. And I want to start by playing a video of a letter that one of their survivors wrote in almost desperation, because it is a desperate time. It's a very sad time, but let's play that video. This is from someone in Swannanoa, Western North Carolina. It's not too far from Asheville where I grew up. We used to call it Swannanowhere. It's a very small town. It has a population of 5,000 people. It says, I'm not even close to being able to tell the story of the last five days in Swannanoa. What I will say to people who are not in the hardest hit areas of Western North Carolina is that there are still huge gaps in communication and many of the worst things that happened have probably not been reported or even understood yet. People are sharing first-hand accounts in person or by text that make it clear to me that there are still many, many fatalities that have not been discovered or confirmed. I've personally spoken to people who have dug living and dead people out of a mudslide, seen their neighbors swept away by water, and seen bodies that haven't been able to be recovered. We have heard stories from Montreat, Grovemont, Beacon Village, Botany Woods. These areas are miles apart from each other and each place really different from each other. A child told me that he saw three houses slide down a slope into his neighborhood. Friends had to claw their way to safety with their seven-year-old while their neighbors died. In the river below them. And that's only what we've been managed to glean about places here in the Swannanoa Valley from communicating with people we know and are directly encountering. It looks like there are multiple other parts of the region horribly hit hard. Marshall, Chimney Rock, Silo, places they haven't reached yet in Transylvania County, Haywood. So many roads blown out and, and who knows what's on the other side. My sister and I heard from nurse friends who have been working in different hospitals 50 miles apart that it is like a war zone. As internet connections have returned, we are seeing pictures of whole neighborhoods submerged, no doubt with residents in their home. We don't even begin to know uh, the full extent of this yet. Western North Carolina is full of creeks, rivers, gullies, and all manner of flowing water. Roads and neighborhoods are often called Blank Creek, Haw Creek, Bent Creek, Garen Creek, Gap Creek, to name a few in Buckley County. Communities are often named after the river that flows through them, like South Toe in Yancey or Tuckasegee in Jackson County. We have hollers and, deep, and steep coves. We have steep terrain and windy two or one lane roads. Many people here live in trailers. Houses and trailers are often down at the end of a road or tucked in a cove or in a neighborhood along a creek or river or down at the bottom of a valley or on a slope. Towns were built along rivers and neighborhoods tucked in there. There, towns and communities grew. Realtors highlight Bold Creek. purple zone where the chance of getting this amount of rainfall in 48 hours is once in a thousand years which maybe just means no one's ever seen anything like that and there's no precedent in history streets neighborhoods place, places have been wiped off the map people had no chance to escape schools are closed indefinitely people are not even close to being able to go back to work we are focused on food, water, medication, transportation, hygiene, who is alive, who is missing, who is dead. We are still very much in triage and cleanup hasn't even begun. Please keep 
paying attention and drawing attention if you are not from here. This is going to be a long haul. I'm so profoundly grateful for community. I am so profoundly grateful for community and the way people are showing up for each other. Guys, this is this is information directly from somebody that's dealing with all this stuff. And it's heartbreaking. You you saw the, the video. This guy could barely hold it together to even read. And, and he clearly from the video, you can tell he had multiple takes. And I'm sitting here. I was just talking to our producer. And it's easy to feel disconnected from what's going on. It's easy to feel separate and apart from. Because it's not affecting us here in our home state. It's not affecting me personally. But this, this is the call of God, right? To care about our neighbors. Who's our neighbors? The people around us. It's not saying necessarily your next door neighbor. It's saying care about your fellow Christians, your fellow citizens. And we do here at 511. But again, it's easy to feel like, well, that's not me. I'm not connected to that. But when you hear the truth, when you hear the stories, it's heartbreaking. The thing is, we have an incompetent, inept government. And the things that they're, they're doing at best are sloppy and poor. And at worst, are downright evil. And we've seen this many times in many areas of the federal government, state government, city government, doesn't matter. It's not just the federal government that has not done the things that they need to do, that has been out for themselves, that has not protected their citizens the way they should. And I'm going to show you here in a second how not only are they not doing that, they're actively stopping others from doing that. And I have no words. It's unfathomable the things that they're doing the things that they're stopping actively. Darius, let's, let's play that first one. My name's Jonathan Howard. I'm a member of the Florida State Guard Special Missions Unit. And I'm also up here with Aerial Recovery, a nonprofit. I came up here on Sunday with Aerial Recovery before we even got activated. We flew up here and then we got activated, which is great. I have my team up here working as well. Here's the problem. I'm gonna tell you everything that's happening from the ground what I'm actually seeing, because what they're telling you is complete bullshit on the news and these politicians don't have a fucking clue and they're lying. And I'll say this now, I'll say it at the end of the video. The only thing I need from this video is helicopters. If I have helicopters, I can save lives. Without helicopters, I can't reach these people. It doesn't matter how many chainsaws and trucks I got, I can't get to them. They're 10 miles in, 20 miles, 40 miles in the mountains. There's no way to get with them or even communicate with them. I am literally flying around in a civilian helicopter looking for SOS messages carved in the mud or painted on the ground and we're dropping down and saving them. What got me fired up about this was yesterday, me and my team did the rescue of that 11 day year old baby. And all these government officials and social media, they're showing that video, that pictures and video of that rescue and claiming that like they have some like government help with that. and. I mean, it, even USAA, I think it was USA Today wrote an article about it saying it was a Florida National Guard that went and got it, like with a helicopter. No, it was me, my buddy Charlie, and a civilian named Zeb with his own personal helicopter out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Like without that civilian, that baby would be dead. And the old lady we went and rescued after that, she'd be dead too because she had one day left of oxygen. That No one was going to go get them. I will tell you when we go up in the air, I probably see 40 civilian helicopters. I might see two Blackhawks, National Guard, military, whatever they are. That's it. No one's out there doing rescues. I have my entire team up here from Florida right now, and they have no ability to go rescue these people other than what they can drive to. And the people that are in dire need, they're out in the mountains. They are completely cut off. Now, I will say, I spoke to my congresswoman down in Florida, and she's a badass. 
and she made a bunch of phone calls, and now we got two contracted 60s coming up here tomorrow, which is great. I love that, but, like, I still don't understand why we don't have more helicopters. Like, we'll get a lot of work done with that, but there's no, uh, no there's no military. There's no, go, no one's doing nothing. I just, it, it blows my mind. And they're not even allowing people to see what's really going on. One of our friends yesterday, they were actually escorting CNN down at Lake Lore, and they wouldn't even let CNN, the sheriff department would not let them go videotape the bad areas, how destructive it is. I don't know why they don't want to show you all that, but, I mean, it is bad. I should also say, when I flew here on Sunday, they actually stopped us from going in, the sheriff department. And it was because of a bunch of politics that they were claiming was a speaker of the House of North Carolina that was preventing us from even going in and trying to kick us out which I have clarified today with North Carolina politicians that reached out to me, good on them, and they were like, that's complete bullshit. Speaker of the House has nothing. He wants you guys there. But this is the kind of political BS that is happening here right now. Like, everyone's trying to be in charge without taking any type of action. Nobody wants to coordinate with anybody. Everybody wants to pretend like they're being a hero while these people are literally fucking dying in the mountains. And these people, like I'm saying, these people are limited medication, they're running out of oxygen, and there's no one going to get them. The most effective way I have found to go find these people is by getting in a helicopter and flying down the rivers and roads and looking for SOS messages or people waving us down. And then we drop down and get them. We have all these people here. We have law enforcement. We have State Guard, National Guard. They have no way to go get these people. Yesterday when I was at the Asheville airport refueling, which, by the way, the civilian is paying all this out of his own pocket. He's not even looking for a reimbursement. I think we did four refuelings yesterday. And that was like just in half a day's work. We're in Nashville, and I saw two Air Force helicopter 60s. And I knew there were PJs just looking at them. And I went up to them like, hey, guys, like, what are y'all doing? And like, this is what you need to be doing. This, 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 this is how I'm finding people. And they're like, we can't go. We're waiting on Title 10 orders. And I'm like, what? They just, they can't get any authority. There's military helicopters all over here sitting on the ground, and they can't do nothing. Even my JSOC boys in Fayetteville, they can't get orders to come out here. It is just the most disgusting thing, and they're killing these people. And I don't know why they're doing it. I don't know what kind of conspiracy. I've heard so many things, whatever you want to come up with. But they are literally allowing these people to fucking die in the mountains right now because we can't get helicopters. They got money for everything else in the fucking world right now, but if they could just get us helicopters... We could fly out there and rescue these people. So I hope this video goes viral. I hope these politicians get fired. I hope people get pissed off. They'll probably kick me out of the state of North Carolina for doing this. But you know what? I don't care because if I can save one more life for it, it's fucking worth it to me. All right, guys. So uh, I do apologize about the language. Um, I thought it was important to bring that information to you guys. So forgive me. But we are all big boys and big girls. So um, we'll have to overlook that a little bit. Uh, but, guys, I'm showing you right here examples of the government's not just lack of response, their ineptitude. They can't figure out which way is up, who's on first. And the media is lying to us. They're gaslighting us like they always do. Are we surprised? No. However, this is a big deal. There's a lot of people that are dying. There's a lot of people that are suffering. There's a lot of people who are starving. So the people that didn't die necessarily from drowning or from, from the hurricane itself, now there's going to be people that will be dying from injuries, uh, that need medical attention, people that will likely die from starvation or dehydration because they're not able to get the resources they need. And they're ready to take them. The government's even sitting there in a parking lot with their birds, their choppers, their trucks, and they won't send the people. Why won't they send the people? What's holding it up? Why won't they tell us the truth about what's going on? The truth is, and we'll get to this more in a second, they don't have any money. They're out of money. The, the, mark my words, guys. FEMA is near bankrupt. They're not telling you guys this. Of course, they're not telling you guys this. They ain't going to tell you guys this. And they'll just print more money, which for those who are educated know this. But if you, if you think about it, it will cause inflation. But what is inflation? Inflation is another tax on the people. 
whether they're taking your money through taxes, through hard-earned dollars, through fees and fines, or whether they're taking your money by making it worth less, either way, they're taking money from you. And there's a bigger plot underneath this. And I know, I sound like a conspiracy theorist. I know, Mike, you're crazy. I'm sure many of you guys that are listening to this probably agree with me. But there's probably some of you out there that are like, ah, you're unhinged. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. But is it really that far-fetched? We know that the media has been lying to us for a long time. I don't think anybody with half a brain thinks that the government tells us the truth, frankly, ever. The CIA fully disclosed that they've worked with the media for decades through Project Mockingbird. And if you guys want to know more about that, you can, you can uh, drop a comment, and, and I'm sure there'll be a very lively discussion in the comments about that, and I'll go ahead and chime in as well. But um, listen to this clip now from this woman who's sitting right there in the middle of the catastrophe, in the middle of the disaster, who's going to tell you exactly how the media is lying to you and the truth about what's going on and how many people are injured and or dying. Hey, y'all. So I'm safe in my house. Our power came on. I have water and I'm so blessed. But the reports that are coming out of these towns in Western North Carolina are horrific. The, um, the news is not even coming close to catching the true devastation. Um, there are bodies that are floating down the river. Babies. And um, if this is not a wake-up call that our government is not for us, then I don't know what is. Um, they're everyday citizens who are taking it upon themselves to go and deliver items and things to these people. Um, anyway, um, pray for Western North Carolina. And don't believe everything that you're hearing on the news because <laughs> they're not. One of my friends in Canada had heard that they're. In Nashville, there are over 900 unidentified bodies, and that was just from two days ago, so I'm sure there are more, but there are people are floating down the river, and if you're able and you can donate or you can get it in the hands of a real person, um, there were like, I think, 10 different truck drivers who were trying to deliver um, goods and they all stopped um, on the way up there and every single tire was fly, um, slashed and so it's it's going to be up to us um, we cannot count on Uncle Sam it's going to be neighbor helping neighbor and I don't care how old or young you are if you can't get out there or you can't donate you can pray um because the devastation is nothing like I have ever seen. And I think this is going to go down probably as one of the worst storms in American history. I just cannot fathom the pain and the destruction and the stuff that these people are going through. So anyway, just remember Western North Carolina and um, listen to the people who are on the ground, not the news. Because they don't know. Anyway, y'all have a good day. Clearly a very emotional issue. And can you blame him? Can you blame her for being emotional about this? And, and one thing she said, and we, we, did, we do this every day, by the way, before the show. We pray every day. We've said many prayers for the people that are being affected here. But I want to encourage you guys as well. If nothing else... You can pray. And not that prayer is the least you can do. Prayer 
accomplishes much. The prayer of a righteous man, the effective prayer of a righteous man, accomplishes much. So even if you're helping financially, even if you're out there going to the area to provide actual, real, on-the-ground feet support, still pray. And I probably don't need to tell many of you guys that, but I do want to remind you how important it is. And you might be saying, well, you've, sh you've showed some social media people, a couple people on Reels, TikTok, Instagram, whatever, that are saying this stuff. And they're saying the media is lying. And I say it every day. We know the media is lying. Not all of it. Not all the time. Of course, they provide some truth, right? Some of the places. They tell you what they want you to know. But... I want to share with you a video from an actual news source so that you say, well, that's more credible because that's just someone on social media. First of all, I tend to believe the people on social media generally more than I believe the news anyway. And I think there's a lot of good reasons for that. And I imagine many of you guys are the same way because they're the people sitting in it, going through it, right in the middle of it. They don't necessarily have an agenda. They don't have someone higher up telling them what to say and what not to say and what to do and what not to do and all of those things. They're just trying to get the truth out, just like we are. But if you guys don't believe social media, let's, let's watch what the actual news station had to say about this. After Helene wreaked havoc in North Carolina, but one Pageland man's efforts to help are now the source of controversy. He flew his own chopper on his own dime to help stranded victims, but that man says he abandoned his rescue missions after a fire official threatened to have him thrown in jail. Well, that man now wants answers and turned to Queen City News Chief Investigator Jody Barr to help figure out what went wrong here. This is the original post that I was reading when I decided to go up and help. It's a long post, but she's saying that her kids and family and animals are, are trapped. No way out, no supplies, and the only way in or out is accessible by helicopter. Limited cell service and no water since Friday morning. I thought I, I have a helicopter and maybe I can help. Jordan Sidham piled food and water into his helicopter Saturday and headed up toward Banner Elk. The only way through a mountain gap in Lake Lure. This is the mountain valley that you would have to fly to to get to Black Mountain where we were escorting people out. This is a mountain range and this is a mountain range. The only place to, to fly through with bad visibility, low cloud coverage is Lake Lure. The cries for help from people stranded without food, water or electricity hit social media soon after the flooding last Friday. So my parents are stuck there. Their address is Banner Elk. They are in the first condo. If you receive this, please give me a call back. Thank you. Sidham's phone started lighting up on Saturday with people begging for help. I, mean, I could hear the desperation in her voice. This is multiple phone calls I've received like this, voicemails, text messages, and you could hear people desperate for help. Sidham and his son rescued four people on Saturday and spent the night in a nearby pilot's lounge, then decided to fly again Sunday morning. I spoke with my son, which is my co-pilot. Um, I, I said, hey, do you, you want to go back out and, and try to help today? And his, his response was, there's so many messages, I, I don't think we can't not go help. Sidham and his son were headed up to Black Mountain. Flight tracking shows no flight restrictions in place Saturday or Sunday morning when Sidham flew through the Lake Lure Gap. But that was all about to change. The Sidham spotted an older couple waving for help, then landed in what's left of their driveway. Hey, I want you to... Uh, let me get in, you step out and go out, help her in, put her bag in the back, get her strapped in. I'm going to take her down, come back, I'll take him, I'll come back and then I'll get you, okay? I originally left my son, co-pilot, on the side of the mountain. It was, it, it was kind of unstable, so I didn't want to put more weight in the helicopter to lift back off. So I left my son with the other victim and, and I was just going to take one person down at the time. And, and you could hear me in the video talking through with the victims and with my son, what we're gonna do. Three minutes away, Sidham spotted a group of rescuers just down the river. He landed and found someone in charge. Told him my, uh, my background experience, law enforcement, uh, firefighting, uh, 
pilot, he immediately started uh, helping with coordination. He, he gave me radio frequencies to coordinate with them on, um, set up a landing area for me to come back with the uh, other victim. And in the uh, middle of the whole conversation and, and then blocking the road off, I was greeted by the, uh, at that time I didn't know, but Lake Lure fire chief or assistant chief maybe, and he shut down the whole operation. So at, at that point there was, I felt like the conversation wasn't going any further. And again, he asked me to leave and, and, and I said, hey, I have no problem getting out of your area. If that's what you want us to do, we'll, we'll leave, no issue. At that point I asked him, you know, what was the reason I had to leave them there? And, and he said, again, you're interfering with my operation. I, I just need you to get out of the area. I said, sir, I'm, I don't know where you were trained at, but I know how my training is and I'm not going to leave personnel behind. I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. He said, if you turn around and go back up the mountain, you're going to be arrested. I said, well, sir, I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. I, I don't know what to tell you. And he said, I'm, I'm letting you know. And at that point, he waved for two law enforcement officers to come over and told me that again, if I go back up the mountain, I would be arrested. He flew the three minute trip back, picked up his son and left the woman's husband behind. I'm sure he was flooded with emotions and, and trying to rescue other people. And I, I just felt that it was best at the time to leave. So I did follow his instructions and I had a conversation with the female victim before I left, apologizing and explaining. She, she was standing there, she heard the whole conversation. And um, they were both very, very surprised, very upset. The husband, as I was leaving off of the side of the mountain, at that point, separated from his wife. He was, he was upset. I can only imagine. Sidaman is nearly 1,400 flight hours, turned his chopper around and headed back to South Carolina, passing people waving for help along the way. As I was actually leaving to go back to get my son, the original chief or, or captain that I spoke to, uh, his crew and, and himself, they, they came back over and said, hey man, we, we can't tell you to go get the victim. We can't even ask you to go get the victim, but we can tell you if you come back with the victim, we'll have you a designated landing spot and, and they, they won't, we'll make sure they don't come over here. So there was no flight restriction when you went in? No, no, no. flight restriction when I went in. Uh, it, it went in place 20 or 30 minutes after the confronta confrontation with uh, Mr. You feel like that was coincidental or, or do you think that that was because of what happened? I don't think it can be coincidental when there has not been one in place the day before doing rescue operations, the night of, the morning of, that took place after our altercation. I, I think there would have never been a uh, TFR put in place had we not had that conversation. If I had to do it over again, I, I would have stopped and I would have rescued as many people in, until they decided they were going to arrest me. Well, for now, we've chosen not to name that Lake Lure fire official because communications in and out of that town are still difficult. We want to include his side in this story, and if and when he responds to our messages, we will. So a uh, quick shout out to MJ Truth Ultra on X. Great account, by the way, guys. Go follow him on X. Uh, thank you for sharing that video. But we have evidence all over the place, and there's many, many, many videos like this one of people trying to help being stopped, whether it's in the air, on the ground, or otherwise. People just want to help. Let us help. I understand that it can interfere with official operations, but maybe somebody ought to go and try to coordinate the citizen volunteers because we need more people than y'all can bring together. We need more people than are officially on the payroll to help because there's so many thousands of people that are being affected here. And we need to do all we can. So I want to encourage all of you guys, whatever you can do, we want to see you do it. And as is so often the case with the American spirit, there's a large number of patriots that won't back down, that will continue to push forward. And it's crazy to think about the fact that they're stopping the rescue efforts, that they're stopping it. Why? It, that's the big resounding question that's th going through my mind. Why? And you have to wonder why. You have to ask yourself why. And you have to ask yourself how all these events are related, how all the dock strikes are related. And why is it going on right now in an election year? We're less than a month away. 
Don't you think that the people who are trying to get elected, Kamala Harris, Tim Walls, would be making a case for themselves by do, putting out a competent effort? We know Trump's been there. Trump's been on the ground. But, guys, sometimes you just have to resist. Sometimes you just have to take a stand against tyranny. And in this next video, we're going to show you a guy who is pulling together an effort to do exactly that. I just got a very terrible phone call. Just got off the phone with a guy in Morristown, uh, Dan Patton. He's told me I can say all this. So apparently in some areas of this region, they are pulling us over before we ever get there, turning us around. As well, if you're one of the fortunate few to actually get into this area, uh, they will unload you. And they're taking it over, putting it in their buildings, locking the doors. Um, as well, Dan is in possession of some really nice equipment. And he fared better than most. And he is being denied the ability to go in there and help. Uh, that being said, um, there's very few ways into this area. We all know this. So there's nothing we can do about that. They're going to know we're coming anyway. So this is what I say. Friday, we're leaving. We've got s several people that want to go with us. And I think that's the exact way we need to go about this. I think we need to go up there and get into the Pigeon Forge Gatlinburg area. And then we need to plot our course and we need to go on in. Some of that goes across the National Park, I think, and up through Cherokee or something. Uh, Dan said he would make sure that we had a route. Uh, that being said, um, inundation, folks, inundation, make it impossible to deter. Uh, that's what's needed here. Without this, we kneel, we comply. If you are prepared to go over to this area to render aid to these victims and you come home loaded, what have, what have you done? I'm not prepared to do that. I'm not prepared to allow these victims to become Hawaii. Um, this is in our capabilities of fixing and helping and ensuring that this isn't their future. Um, I'm not prepared to let this go. I'm not tapping out. I'm not prepared to tap out. I'm not going to tap out. Um, if you're in on that shit right there, you believe in fuck FEMA? Uh, we need to go in together. We need to make it so they cannot stop us getting to the victims. We need to get to them. We need to get shit up there to them. And we meet, need to make sure that that's where it's going. Also, I can't stress this enough. Winter's coming. There's people up there. We're being told not to bring clothes. Anybody heard that? Don't bring clothes. There's a lot of people up there. The only clothes they have is what's on them. Their shit's gone. Yesterday had a lot of shit. Today, not so much. Their shit's gone. And we're being told not to even bring them clothes. Winter's coming to this region very, very soon. I don't know if you've ever been up on a mountain before. It gets cold. Uh, just y'all reach out to me, man. We need to figure this out. Um, we're being turned around and everything else. Helicopter pilots are told they can't fly. Uh, Dan's being told he can't help. We're being told we can't come. Oh, stand down. We got this. Yeah, we fucking see. You all have strengthened yourselves. You all have stood up. You all are getting real tired of everything that's going on. This is a common core cause that will give this nation a tremendous amount of, uh, sorry, y'all, phone call. Uh, this will give this nation a tremendous amount of confidence in its ability to stand on its own feet and help itself. We have told everybody for three and a half years on this app, nobody's coming to help us. You see? And now we're being told that we can't even help those that need our help. Y'all, we have perilous times coming in front of us. We have the ability right now to change these people's future, to help them in their time of peril. And we are being told no. I don't know about you, 
but that's just fucking unacceptable. Reach out to me. Let's go in together. Let's inundate. Let's make it to where the answer can't be no. Let's kick the fucking door off the hinges and go in and help our neighbors. The Bible tells us if you don't love thy neighbor, you don't love thy God. Ever read that? Let's love our neighbors, people. They don't want us turning our face back to God. Shit, let's do it anyway. They don't want us vote for a fella neither, but we're going to. Again, guys, apologize about the language. It's a little, it's a little funny uh, talking about the Bible on one hand and cussing in the same sentence. But you understand the anger, the frustration, and watching these, this video and watching so many. Our nation's near a boiling point. When our own government can't protect its citizens, when a natural disaster happens, when they're intentionally importing criminals into this country and giving them the money that needs to go to the hurricane survivors, the hurricane victims, the money that needs to be used for our people here, we're sending overseas to Ukraine, and you wonder why people are angry, you wonder why people are done with it, tired of it, you wonder why I said the other day, you pissed off the wrong group of people. We're not taking it no more. We're not going to have it. Guys, it's time to take a stand and do something. We're not going to allow this to continue to go the path that it's going and to watch our neighbors be destroyed, to watch the government corruption silencing voices that are speaking the truth, just like ours, just like yours. It's time to say no more, guys. But it's not all doom and gloom. The people that are rallying, the people that are coming together, the God-fearing, America-loving patriots that care about their neighbors, they are taking a stand. They are coming together. I want to share with you this video to give you a little bit of that encouragement of what it looks like when we do come together, when we do support each other, when we do give a darn about our fellow man. So I wanted to make this video now, even though I am absolutely covered in mud and exhausted because I have to talk about what happened today. Um, so my husband and I went out and um, with our two amazing kids and we went to one of the hardest hit areas from all of the flooding and everything in East Tennessee after the hurricane this week. And we were at a friend's house who had a couple of feet of mud in his house. And we showed up this morning not knowing what we were going to do. My husband um, brought his excavator so he could help move stuff around. And we brought shovels and we got our rubber boots. And we showed up. And the entire day long, God showed up over and over and over again. Every single thing we needed. We had a dozen people shoveling mud out of the house by 10 a.m. When that crew left, we were like, we really should start working on, we got to rip out all this drywall now. He lost the whole back of his house. He had a window bust out. He had trees and logs and debris come through his house. His appliances, gone. Drywall ripped out. We had three contractors come by. Um, one of them came by with a nail gun and was like, let me secure the house. I think that we can stabilize it and I think we can save it. So we worked all day. As soon as all the mud was out of the house, we were like, well, I guess tomorrow we'll do the drywall and insulation. And I said, man, it's a shame we can't just do it today. As soon as I said it, I looked down the street and there's like a dozen women with Isaiah House t-shirts walking down the street. We don't have anything to do right now. How can we help? I said, well, we were about to tear all the drywall out. Great, point us in the right direction. People started showing up from all over the Tri-Cities. We had strangers everywhere. We were like, we need a ladder. We, we had no tools. And this man walks in 
from Hawkins County. And he was like, y'all need tools. Hold on, I'll be right back. He goes out to his truck and starts bringing in crowbars and hammers and stuff. And we were like, we need a ladder. We can't reach up near that. And somebody said, oh, I saw one. It washed up in the debris out in the front yard. And I said, well, we really need a crowbar too. Oh, there's a crowbar out there too. Okay. Like, are you serious? There were over a hundred people who showed up at that house today. Every time we ran out of water, somebody pulled up in a golf cart and said, hey, do you guys need a case? of water I was standing on the edge of the yard talking to the guy who had lost everything and I said man if we could just have like another excavator or backhoe or something I didn't get the words out of my mouth a guy pulled up on a backhoe <laughs> y'all the the outreach and the people who are just showing up they don't know each other, but they're all wearing Jesus t-shirts, and they all have Jesus love in their eyes and their hearts. And they're just showing up in these neighborhoods and cleaning out stuff and just, and just helping people and loving people. And I just, I've cried the whole day. I've never seen anything like it. We need help. It's bad. Like East Tennessee and Western North Carolina are bad. And y'all, I just want to encourage you guys, like, don't wait. Don't wait for FEMA or whatever or go with, you have to go through United Way, whatever. No, don't wait. Put on your rubber boots and get a shovel and get a mop and get, get your tools and show up. Just show up in these neighborhoods. Because every time I looked up today, every time I looked up today, there were people just standing there just showing up. Just, I would look up and there was a new family with their kids with all of their gear, everything we needed. Point us in the right direction. What do we need to do? It restores my faith in our Christian nation and in our nation on the whole and just in the goodness of people who really want to get out there and do something. If you want to volunteer, if you want to help, if you want to donate to somebody who really needs help, reach out to me, message me. He did not have flood insurance. He's lost everything, and he's probably not going to have any help at all. This is the house he's lived in his whole entire life. We need drywall. We need insulation. We need somebody to put the back of his house back on. He needs new flooring. He needs appliances. He needs light fixtures. He needs new kitchen cabinets that we had to rip out today. He okay, I got cut off, and I don't know what I said last. Um, he needs kitchen cabinets. He needs somebody to seed his yard. He needs equipment, heavy equipment. That whole street, every single person on that street needs help. These people need help. And money is great. Sending money is great. But we need help. We need people showing up that when you look up, they're just standing. So, guys, I want to encourage you to pray. To pray for the people over there. Again. Send money. Send resources. If you can go, send help. But even if you do any or all of those things, also send angels. Pray. Pray for God. Because God is showing up. This woman just showed you that. God is showing up and he will continue to show up because God cares about his people. And guys, we have some friends that are putting something together. We have many people. You, if you want to reach out to me or reach out to um, any of us here at 511, we can put you in touch with the right people, put you in touch with any of these people that you've seen on these videos, depending on what location you're at. But we have some friends over in the Carolinas that are putting something together in coordination with one of our churches. And we want to play this for you guys so you can see this. And this will be the last thing. And, and uh, we'll end on this. So, guys, whatever you can do to help is greatly, greatly appreciated. Thank you, guys. This is my dad, Doug DeBerti. I'm Brad. The hurricane in North Carolina has... Yeah, right they're, they're looking right, right now, now. Yeah. And, and they just honestly guys they just need help the biggest thing they need help with is that they need food they need food and water and then that's where we come in along with with you guys we partnered with valley bible fellowship 
And uh, there's gonna be a donation link. If you go to my bio and hit donate, you'll see all the different things. It's a nonprofit, 100% of the proceeds are going to help all these people. We don't know how far my dad and I personally are gonna be able to get, but we are gonna go as far in North Carolina as we possibly yeah, so, can. Yeah, I so mean, whether you got a dollar or you got five bucks, if you don't go to Starbucks today, look what five bucks, five bucks gets you 40 waters. And at the end of the day, if it was anyone out there that was in the mountains and you're able to get water and food now, I mean, it, it's gonna keep life. going, yeah. I mean, it's not like it's over. People are thinking it's over, it's just begun. Every single day they need food, not just yeah. a one-time deal. It's bad, and, and if you guys are local to Charlotte, I'll put all the info in the bio of where you could drop off food, water, or anything like that. But the biggest thing, you guys, is just to donate. Yeah, uh, please, we're, we're please help or pass the video on. Yeah. If you don't have an extra buck, that's okay. Just maybe you could pass the video on to 10 people, and maybe one of those people can help out a little bit. We're not asking for a lot, but we're controlling it. We're going to make sure that every dollar goes to buy food for the people in need.